welcome to Rhonda Thomas at Denver International Airport. Coming up, I'll tell you the surprise we saw on the roads on this snowy morning. I'm Vita Urbonis on the roads in Colorado. Right now, plows are out full force fighting those icy roads. We'll have much more coming up live. This is 9 News. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to 9 News 7 a.m. I'm Kyle Dyer. And I'm Greg Moss. It's Friday, isn't it? It's the last day of the month. And it's the this last it. day of the month, January 31st, 2014. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, the snow has been falling all night long. Kind of yeah. tapered off here in the metro area. Most roads are snow packed. They are icy. Very Sidewalks nice. are very icy. Our backyard here Did is treacherous. Did you experience treacherous. that coming in? I didn't wipe out yet. Uh, we have school delays and closures, too. We have them posted on the bottom of the TV screen and on 9news.com. We've got team coverage of this storm, too, all across the state, uh, from Loveland to the DTC area and from DTC. DIA up to Summit County. Let's get the latest right now from Becky, who is in the Weather Center. Or actually, no, you made it outside. You stayed out there. Good for you. You are brave souls. <laughs> it's just cold right now. The snow stopped, but we got to get ready for round two. Yeah, that's right. So don't think that we are out, out of the clear or in the clear for now because two, at 2, 2 30 this afternoon, we've got another round of snow that's going to be headed this direction, and it's going to bring another three inches of snow back here to the Denver metro area and more for folks who live in our foothills. Take a live look right now, though, outside. Mostly cloudy skies, a couple of flurries and calm winds, which makes 17 not so terrible outside. You just need to make sure you layer up. We've got a lot of snow reports. That's all the little snowflakes you see there on your screen coming into the networks of 9 News. But let's take those off and show you the snow. Just flurries here through Denver, out through our foothills. Again, that second round not set to move through until 2 or 2.30. And then the target area is going to be locations along and south of Interstate 70. Right now, 16 degrees at the airport, 18 Greeley, 15 and 14. Collins. We're in the teens and 20s on our eastern plains with teens and 20s also in the high country. At noon today, still just mostly cloudy, but cold. 24 degrees, 29 at 3. And at 3, we'll see that snow across parts of the front range. And that snow continues into tonight's drive. So this morning is slick and tonight will be icy too with temperatures at 6 p.m. dropping to 26. We'll detail more of this for you coming up. Tell you about that extra snow that's coming through the foothills, and then also, of course, what's going on in the high country because we've got big time snow up there. That's all in just a few minutes. Right now, we need to check on current road conditions with Amelia. Good morning. Good morning, Becky. Yes, yeah, 703, and the double drive times are in effect across pretty much all of our area freeways, including 36. This, I know it's a little bit of a blurry shot, but you can see the plow crews, the emergency crews, and an accident in the clearing stages. Both sides of 36 have run pretty tough near Pecos Federal and also Sheridan Construction. And obviously temporarily uh, shut down for the night because of all the snow that moved in. Now we've got a couple major closures here, including our east and westbound ramps. Moving on to I-25, that closure just went into effect recently. We've also got a westbound 270 crash at Vasquez. 225 northbound shut down at Mississippi. Backups are going to take us through Parker and DTC. And we're also expecting the closure along I-25 to still stay in place between Wellington and the Wyoming state line. Very tough conditions to the north, but your best alternate route there is going to be to use 280. Now, we're going to head out live to 9 News reporter Colleen Ferreira, who has been up to the north side. Colleen, what's it like from your vantage point? Good morning, Amelia. Thank you for mentioning that closure, uh, I-25 north and south, Wellington to Wyoming. Keep that in mind. Very different, though, here in Loveland. I just spoke with the City of Loveland Police Department. They tell me, knock on wood, that they are sitting pretty this morning. Nothing. No road closures, no accidents to report so far, which is great news if you are heading to work or heading to school this morning. Out here, the roads are definitely snowpacked. We expect that. The great news is, is that I just saw two plows go by. That's probably the seventh and eighth plow. I I've seen all morning long. So they are coming by here frequently, just trying to make this drive on I 25 as easy as possible for all of you. But it is very icy. We did make that drive from Denver to Loveland this morning. The drifting out here with some of the winds has been very difficult, making it very low visibility in some areas. But for the most part, it's okay. It's not horrible. It's not the worst that I've ever seen out here. We are going to stay out here all morning long. If you have a question about your commute here in Loveland, please go ahead and tweet me at Colleen Ferreira. I will try my hardest to get you any update you need. Kyle? Hey, thank you. Now let's check in with Vita Urbonus, who's been driving throughout the metro area today. Where are you now, Vita? 
Uh, yeah, we are off of uh, 225 right now. We are on Peoria. We're heading north towards 6th Avenue, and that's where we're hearing about uh, several cars uh, crashes in that area. And want to show you now the perspective from the side roads because 225 was uh, shut down, and we had to get off uh, on uh, over on Iliff before Mississippi due to that crash. We can now show you how these side roads are just super slick as well. And the interesting part about these side roads that we're dealing with uh, this morning. Morning are the fact that it's very, very kind of almost slushy and slick that way. So you kind of have to really push hard to get your grip as you take off from a, a stop sign or a stoplight. So that's got to be. All right, um, we lost our signal with Vita, but we'll catch up we with her in just so a minute. So speaking of travel, we want to see how it uh, is out of the airport. And Taronda Thomas has been out near DIA all morning long, running pretty smoothly, though. It has been. I mentioned earlier a surprise that we saw on the roads. I want to show it to you. An example is on this surface street right here. Take a look. There's no snow here. That is because of the hard work of the snow plows. So Pena Boulevard looks a lot like this. Pretty clear, just kind of wet. And the cars that are traveling on Pena right now going regular speeds. We traveled the speed limit early this morning when we got here. And since then, there have been even more snow plows coming down in this area. You know, DIA has more than 200 pieces of snow removal equipment, more than 500 people to remove that snow. And that's what they've been doing all overnight. Now, the airlines have been de-icing the plane since last night. However, there are still cancellations and delays, about 45 of them right now, according to DIA. And that number keeps fluctuating. But officials with the airport say that most of the cancellations are in those, those smaller regional airports that go to mountain towns around Denver. Say, for instance, Aspen, Snowmass. We've seen those flights canceled. As far as New York goes, some people flying there for, for the Super Bowl. I had not seen any flights to New York that were canceled at last check. I'll keep my eye on that for you. But just in case, if anyone's headed out lucky enough to go to the Super Bowl. Those flights look pretty good this morning, but we have seen delays and cancellations to areas like Texas, some of the Dakotas. It really just depends on where you're going, so check that flight. The snow is pretty light out here right now. That's definitely good news because it was heavier this morning, but as far as getting here, we had a rough time on I-25 and I-70, but once we got to Pena, it's smooth sailing, so hopefully you'll be able to make it this far and then get on into the airport and get there on time. I got a tweet from someone who had been following our updates the whole time, and and said they made it to the airport just fine. Let's go back into the studio. Okay, thank you. And let's go up to Silverthorne because Lindsay Watts has been up there since yesterday afternoon. And Lindsay, the picture behind you is just gorgeous. Yeah, very, very pretty up here. We're going on about 20 inches of new snow here in Silverthorne, and it's still coming down. You can see just how deep the snow is. This bank that I'm standing in up past my knees means another snow day for Summit County Schools. We're here along I-70, uh, which is snowpack. CDOT is warning that it's icy and slick in spots all across the state. The traffic that we've seen here in Silverthorne this morning actually is moving along pretty good, better than you would expect, considering the amount of snow that we've seen. A lot of skiers and snowboarders, of course, going to be heading up here today. And if that's you, just travel safely. Uh, I have to say that I am jealous. I did bring along my snowboard gear, Greg, just in case. Probably in not going to be time for that today. But All right. when you're coming to the mountains to cover 30 inches of snow, you never know. Got to be ready, you just know. in case. You know. You've got to be you ready, Lindsay. Time to hit the slopes. And you know what else you need to be ready for is doing a little snow angel up there. So here's the deal. By the end of our two hours, you, oh I gosh. want you to just fall backwards and do a big snow angel. We may never see her again. Well, I know, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> I, I want to do it. Here. I would be scared that I wouldn't be able to get up again. There's yeah, just this so is much true. snow. <laughs> well, get Tom Cole, your photojournalist, to help you out of there. Get me up. <laughs> okay, uh, you guys be cute. safe up there. Hey, take a look at this. This shows the danger of black ice, especially down in oh, oh my, my gosh. goodness, down south. That's a tow truck driver in Mobile, Alabama, Jeez. barely escaping, hitting, uh, being hit by a car that loses control, as you see. Clearly, visibly shaken by all this. I don't want to see it again. I don't want to see not, it again. He was not oh hurt. Oh my gosh. That is unbelievable. Ugh. Wow. What do you do when you see that happening?
But that's uh, what they've been dealing with down south as well. Mm -hmm. Around here, it's now 9 after 7. The Aurora Theater shooting suspect is back in court this morning. Today's public hearing is being held for the judge to decide whether crime scene reconstruction experts should be allowed to testify during this trial. A hearing earlier in the week was closed because the topic was whether Holmes should undergo another psychiatric evaluation. The judge worried that the testimony could potentially taint a jury pool. At this point, he hasn't announced his decision yet. The suspect could face the death penalty if he is convicted of the murders. He has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Over in Italy, police have detained Amanda Knox's ex-boyfriend at a hotel near Italy's border with Slovenia and Austria. Raphael Solicito and Knox were convicted in an Italian court for a second time in regards to the death of a British student, Meredith Kircher. Police say that his passport has now been confiscated. They say he will be released later, it, but but he uh, will have to remain in Italy for now. Knox has been in the U.S. for two years now. She says she's going to fight going back. In China, they're ringing in the new year with bells, fireworks, lots of celebrations. Many are also visiting temples to pray for a year filled with good fortune, a plentiful harvest and happiness. And yes, it is the Chinese New Year and it is the year of the horse. And as we've been saying, great timing. It does. It is. Yes. Because it's I mean, good luck and lots saying, of energy. Yeah, and that's right. what we need for this. Oh, we hope that the year of the horse will bring good luck to our Denver Broncos. We know the real horse. His thunder is there. Yeah, he's there in New <laughs> York City, the right game. downtown. They FedExed him, and he did, he looks quite well from what we've seen the yeah, pictures this morning. Yeah, he has a little quilted coat over him well, to keep him warm. We sent Gary down to Chinatown in New York City to find out exactly what the year of the horse means, and happy new to year to you, Gary. And happy new year to you guys, the year of the horse. Gotta love that, right? So timing is everything, and we are so blessed to be in New York City and Chinatown for the year of the horse. You know, the theory is that'll be good uh, luck for the Broncos, so we decided to go down and test that theory. What better place to find out about the year of the horse than New York's Chinatown? Amid the hustle and bustle and traffic and people, there's a little gift shop that knows all about horses. They sell them. And since today's the new year, they're selling a lot of them. Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We asked an expert there, uh, <laughs> what is it about horses anyway? Good energy, uh, determination, 100 percent. Uh, Effort. Well, that definitely sounds like the Broncos. What else? Uh, we hope for good energy, success, and good fortune. Ah, uh, that sounds like the Broncos, too. So what if a horse, say, battled a, mm, I don't know, Seahawk? Who would win? Horse. Definitely the horse. <laughs> so I guess that's why this isn't the year of the Seahawk. All things considered, the Chinese New Year, the game being played a stone's throw from Chinatown, looks pretty good for our Broncos. Go Broncos. Go Broncos indeed. <laughs> and Gung Hei, Pat Choi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Gung Hei Fat Choi to all you guys too. Happy New Year. And Chinatown is wonderful. I just love it down there. And, and we uh, ate some pretty good food too, I got to tell you. Thanks to Eric Kay for putting that story together. Let's go out to Corey Rose. She's at 30 Rockefeller Center today, where she was on the Today Show about 30 minutes ago. Corey, how'd it go? It was great. It was so much fun. We had the mayor, we had thunder, we had the cheerleaders and fans. It was a blast. We're going to have the whole thing for you coming up on 9 News 830. And I guess happy Chinese New Year, right? That's always a good sign. That was such a great story, Gary. So aside from the big game and the commercials, of course, the halftime show is one of all the fans' favorites. And this year's entertainment is sure to please. Bruno Mars and the Red Hot Chili Peppers will be performing. But it's going to be more than just rock and roll on Sunday night. They actually have charity in mind. This is so wonderful. The Red Hot Chili Peppers will be auctioning off the drum set used in their halftime show to go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation and granting kids wishes. There's actually two drum sets, one for the AFC and one for the NFC, and they're wrapped in Broncos and Seahawks logos and colors. Make-A-Wish sends 14,000 kids on their wish each and every year, and this will help kids all across the country, including in Colorado.
Since we were founded in 1980, Make-A-Wish has granted 240,000 wishes. And we like to talk about a wish more than just a moment in time. A lot of people think a wish, it's a nice thing, but we believe it's necessary. That um, in concert with medicine, that a wish come true helps wish kids feel better and in some cases get better. So it's a really, really important thing in, in those kids' lives. So the drums are up for auction now through February 7th. When I looked at the auction site yesterday, it was up to about 12,000 for NFC and 15,000 for AFC. Each wish costs about $8,000 to send a kid on their wish. So this will be great and be able to grant so many of those kids wishes. If you want to bid or check it, uh, check out those drum sets. You can do that by going to nfl.com/auction. Back to you guys. <laughs> you were looking up in the sky. I don't know. Looked like something. Our attention. I think there's some pigeons up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I wondered what you yeah, were looking. Duck. <laughs> yes, I'm hoping they fly away yeah, before anything comes down on me. What, what happens when you see a New York pigeon? You run. <laughs> what? Run. Yes, absolutely. Whenever it's overhead, yes, that's yeah. what I'm thinking right now. So for now, back to you. Okay, good. Right. We'll let you Thank go. Thank you, Corey. Take shelter. So if you're just getting going this morning, try to give yourself some extra time to get to where you are because mm -hmm. the snow that fell overnight is leaving behind quite a snowy, icy drive. And even the sidewalks are really dicey. So be careful and take your time when you go out. We've got team coverage for you coming up. 719 right now after eight years at the helm of the Federal Reserve. Chairman Ben Bernanke is stepping down at the end of the day. He's retiring. That's when his second term will end. The president has called Bernanke, quote, a voice of wisdom and a steady hand. Of course, Janet Yellen is taking the helm tomorrow officially. She will be the first woman to lead the Fed in its 100-year history. Microsoft reportedly pretty close to naming a new CEO. There are reports this morning it'll be the man who's head of its cloud computing division, and others are speculating it'll be one of the members of the company's board and Bloomberg says that the next CEO might actually replace Bill Gates as chairman. He might be out completely. Hmm, we'll see what happens. At 7:20, let's get another check of the morning drive. At 7:20, if you're just leaving the house now, it might take you what, an uh, extra 45 minutes to an hour to get to work. Oh yes, it could take you quite a while. We're doubling some of our drive times this morning because of all the crashes and delays. We have our north end rotating camera here, so it's going to spin through a couple different locations. But in the meantime, boy, getting outside, you are going to need that extra few minutes. We're going to focus in on a couple spots on our metro drive that do include some major slowdowns and closures. We've got this full closure of both east and westbound ramps of I-70 leading on to southbound 25. The alternate route is to use Washington. Overall, 270 still solid both directions at Vasquez because of a crash and 225 were closed down northbound at Mississippi. Don't forget, I-25 is still shut down from Wellington to the Wyoming state line. U.S. 6 is closed and so is U.S. 40 up and over Berthoud Pass. We'll be right back. If you haven't been to AFW recently, come take another look. We've got some great deals during our January clearance going on right now. Come see some of our new fresh looks arriving all the time. If you're looking to add some style to your home, here at American, we have a great variety to choose from. We have every style for your lifestyle in stock and ready for pickup or delivery. At AFW, we make buying furniture affordable. AFW's January clearance going on right now. Check out some of these new snow totals coming into the networks of Nine News. Aurora, three and a half inches for you, 4.6 for Broomfield, 3.7 it in parts of downtown Denver, 5.6 for Sterling, and five and a half for Greeley. More is on the way as round two builds in after two o'clock this afternoon. Up in the high country, here's a few more mountain resorts for you. 48 hour mountain snow totals have us up to 23 inches at Eldora, 26 for Monarch, Powderhorn 10, 15 at Silverton and Wolf Creek, 17 inches. I have been going over a lot of different snow tolls throughout the morning. I've been posting them all on Twitter. You can go ahead and follow me at Becky Ditchfield. I use the hashtag 9WX and you should too on social media. That also helps us follow what's going on all across the front range. I also have, or we also have a link to snow totals in our weather story on 9news.com. So click on that story and you'll find the link inside there. A live look over Fort Collins right now shows snow on the ground, but not a lot falling. A lot of that has really slowed down since earlier this morning, but the pictures continue to come in. Lisa says 
sent us in this photo out from Fair Play. This photo of the covered patio furniture comes in to us from Greeley by Melissa. Hey, send us in your patio furniture. Kyle Clark is out of town, so the, now is your opportunity. Out near Meeker, I'd call that a white picket fence for sure. Cindy Wells sent us in this photo of all of the snow that they've seen out in that part of town. Now, most of the snow that we have across the state is moving out. We've got another round that's going to build in, but it's going to take a few hours. We've got some flurries that HD Doppler 9 is picking up on here in the Denver metro area. That stretches down south through Colorado Springs. The bulk, that heavier snow, still out near Ray, and that's going to only going to be out there for about 45 more minutes. We do have winter storm warnings mainly in effect for the high country now throughout the remainder of our day today. We also have a few left over out on our eastern plains. Those will expire soon, but round two moves in, and this is going to target those areas along and south of I-70. It's going to push in about 2.30 through parts of the Denver metro area, hang out throughout 6 o'clock tonight, which means the drive home is going to be messy. And even through 10.30, we're going to see light to moderate snow across parts of the front range, including in our foothills. And it really doesn't start to wrap up till after 6.30 tomorrow morning, and then we'll see some flurries redevelop as the system moves out. So we have a solid three more inches to go here in Denver before this thing is said and done. Four down through Castle Rock and another five to eight falling across our foothills. Right now we're in the teens. Highs will be in the middle to upper 20s today as we head into tonight. We're going to see those lows drop to 14 and 20s and 30s will take us through the weekend. This is 9 News. It is 9 News and we're in the backyard. Yes, we are. Why not? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why not? The snow has it's stopped. Historic. It has uh, left a lot of cold behind yes. and a lot of slick conditions That's as well. We've thing. got team coverage, including uh, Becky and Amelia and Kyle and myself. Mm -hmm. And yes. we've got lots of people outside covering what's going on. Yeah, all across the state. Including old Brennan, who I think is on the what? Where are you on the back porch? And front, you've got porch. Front, front porch. Front porch. We're in the back. Oh, okay. We'll get to him just a minute. <laughs> okay. First, Becky. We're going to see another round of this, though, aren't we? We are. But it's not going to warm up, and we need all that ice the repellent stuff for the sidewalks. I know. It's slippery. I, sun would help that out. Yeah, we're not I don't think we're going to get much of that okay. this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Mostly cloudy skies. Round two with this system is going to move in after 2, 2.30 today. And that's going to bring another three inches of snow here to parts of the Denver metro area and me, even more out to the west. Right now, we have mostly cloudy skies. A couple of snowflakes here around town. That's the same case up through our foothills. And all along and east of I-25, the bulk of what we saw late last night and yesterday Yesterday afternoon is now pushing into Nebraska and Kansas. Several new snow reports popping up on the screen. We'll go over those coming up here in just a few minutes. But HD Doppler 9 now for Denver in the Front Range really not looking all that impressive. It's cold, like we were saying, 16 degrees at DIA, 18 Greeley, 15 in Fort Collins. We've got upper teens and low 20s on our eastern plains. Teens and 20s also up through the high country. Winds today, not an issue, but the snow does kick up, making for another really messy drive home tonight. At noon, we're going to be mostly cloudy. Flurries will be at 24, 29 at 3. And with that snow already beginning, we are looking at snow at the 3 o'clock hour as temperatures get up to 29. That snow, of course, continuing right smack through our drive home with temperatures at 6 p.m. drop into 26 degrees. So we'll time out the rest of that snow for you, tell you what we can expect across our foothills and in our high country. And then comes the weekend, big weekend here in the Denver metro area. For those of us who are staying in town and watching the Broncos game, I'll have all the details for you coming up. Right now, though, we need to check on those road conditions. And Amelia has the latest on that. All right, Becky, we finally have some good news out across our drive. We're all clear on the right shoulder of that drive south Bound, as well as northbound 25 near 38th Avenue. The cars is still crawling, so you will need to double your drive times, but at least we're starting to see some of that friction melt off a little bit of the snow and clear out some of our problems as well. Good news out to the east side. 225 now reopened across our drive northbound at Mississippi after a closure that lasted for a couple of hours. Lots of people opted for Havana or Chambers as alternate routes. Well, they're no longer necessary because we're finally starting to get better. We're also getting slightly better across I-70 and 270, but Crashes are still coming down here across westbound, right in the area of Vasquez. We've got a couple of wrecks along 70 leading onto the ramps at southbound 25, and that's why we're still blocked off. So Washington is your alternate route. The other great news up to the north end along I-25 is that we are back open from Wellington to the Wyoming state line, but out west, US 6 and also 40 over Berthoud Pass are still shut down this morning. Now we're going to head out to the 9 News front yard and check in with our 9 News reporter, Noel Brennan. Hey, good morning, Amelia. Well, before we talk about the weather, we got to bring in number 18, Peyton Manning, who came all the way from New York just to lay one thing to rest, to prove 
He doesn't mind the cold weather. He doesn't mind the snow. He can still throw the football in any kind of conditions. I mean, look at him. He's wearing short sleeves, no under armor for this guy. The snow does not bother him. So you probably got to head on a plane and get back to New York. So good luck this weekend, Peyton. We know you're going to do awesome. So we'll see you later. All right, well, let's talk about the snow conditions out here in front of the station. Main thoroughfares are doing pretty good. You can check out Spear off to my right. It's a little slushy out there on Logan as well. You're going to be dealing with those conditions if you're driving through the city. The side streets are doing a little worse. They are snow packed, especially around our station here in downtown Denver. You can see also that the, the sidewalks are a little icy. If you take a look at my foot here, it is sliding quite a bit because there's no, no snow here but it is icy so if you're walking on the sidewalks you just have to be careful anywhere you're driving uh, Kyle this morning you want to be very cautious because even if you don't see the snow in the roadways there could be black ice so you got to oh, take it yeah. easy. Oh yeah definitely Absolutely. out on the patio just now I mean you can't put enough of that stuff down. From what we're seeing snow total wise uh, the, our neighbors to the north got a little bit more snow in, uh, than we did in some of the ice. Mm -hmm. We've uh, sent Colleen uh, Ferreira up to the Loveland area keeping an eye on the road conditions up there. How are we doing Kind of rambled there. Good morning, Greg and Kyle. Yeah, I don't have Peyton Manning here, but I do have a lot of snow. We're talking a lot in some areas more than others, and especially I-25. It's really snow-packed, and a lot of people starting to leave their houses, maybe waited an extra long to get out for that morning commute. We are seeing a lot more people out on the roads uh, going extra slow. About an hour ago, people were just flying right on by, but I think people now are just kind of taking it a little slow because it is snowy, it is ice-packed as well. And down here, I've been talking about drifts all morning and some of you may say, well, you know, what does the drifting matter? Well, drifting matters because, uh, you know, if it's a little bit windy, this stuff can just fly right onto I-25 and it makes visibility really low. We experienced that on the way here to Loveland today. So just keep that in mind. Uh, just try to go as slow as possible. This snow over here, like we've been saying all morning long, it is light, it is fluffy, it is not heavy and wet. So that is the good news. If you do have to dig yourself out of this this morning, you should be okay. Just leave yourself a little extra time. All right, Colleen, thank you so much. All right, look at this. The heavy snow caused a building's roof to collapse last night in Leadville. Nobody was inside the Sayer Mickey building at the time um, that this happened. Nobody was hurt. The collapse pushed out the front facade of the building. And this is so sad because there are so many historical buildings right there. Well, that's right a very there. historic building. Downtown and they, they run Leadville. in some inspectors. So part of Main Street is closed mm. still this morning until they get that all figured out and make sure it's, it's safe. It's a shame. Those buildings are pretty. Well, another news we're uh, watching today at 736 right now. The first group of athletes from the U.S. have now touched down at Sochi. Earlier this week, the U.S. Olympic Committee did announce it was sending the largest delegation of any nation in the Winter Games history, 230 members across 15 different disciplines. There will be 105 women, 125 men, including 106 returning Olympians and 99 from the contingent that won the overall medal count at the 2010 Vancouver Games. So. Go USA. Okay. We'll take you live to Sochi, of course, throughout the games, and we'll be posting Olympic competition results across the networks of Nine News. Now, we're going to do this in a variety of ways, and we, and we want to keep the surprise from you if, if you want that. Okay. And our newscasts, we will warn you before the results are released. We've got those NBC chimes. Now, on Twitter, uh, they will be posted as soon as they happen in Sochi. Now, keep in mind, Sochi's 11 hours ahead of us, so a lot of folks will be, post will be seeing these uh, results posted overnight or in the morning. On the Nine News Facebook page and on Nine News.com, you're you're going to have to click through to a specific article to see the results, and our headlines on the homepage should not give anything away either. Okay. Just so you're in oh. the tune there. So it's coming up. I can't believe it. Uh, I know. A big football game. A week from today. The Olympics. This is very I exciting. Know. We are just two days away now from kickoff for Super Bowl 48. Our crews are covering all the angles of the Super Bowl. Corey is in New York City and Manhattan this morning. Gary is over in the New Jersey side of the Broncos Hotel. Yeah, good morning, guys. It was so nice this morning. We decided to move out here on the patio. This truly is the first live shot I've done all week where I haven't been shivering. It's supposed to get up into the 40s today, maybe even 50 by Super Bowl Sunday. Hey, we've been making it a habit of showing you the headlines of the New York newspapers. Check out the Daily News. This is Peyton and his duck dynasty. Of course, Richard Sherman talked about how he throws ducks, and Peyton says, I know I throw ducks. You know what? I'm proud of my ducks because our receivers can catch them anyway. So there is a Peyton as Duck Dynasty. You know what? Why let a good idea go to waste, right? The Post, Duck Dynasty. They had the same idea. Then, of course, USA Today, they did a story on Adam Gase. Broncos find a perfect fit. 
and it talks about how he and Peyton are just fast buddies and doing very good. And finally, hero or goat, the New York Times decides it's going to come down to a field goal. Which kicker? I put my money on Prater, I think. So that's the headlines this morning. Let's go out to Corey. She's at 30 Rock in New York City. Corey, good morning. Good morning. Some great headlines this morning. Those pictures are so funny. So as you mentioned, it is actually warming up in New York and Jersey City this morning. And I must say, even though the sun's not out, it definitely feels warmer than the last few days, which is fantastic because as the weather gets warmer here, the Super Bowl tickets are starting to sell better, which is fantastic. Organizers like that because last week's sales were pretty sluggish. Ticket prices average about 2800 bucks right now. That's not as expensive as other years, but still takes a chunk out of your wallet. That's for Sure. Washington State's leading ticket sales, then New York State, and then Colorado. Denver Fire Department's ready to show off their Bronco spirit. They tweeted this photo yesterday. They'll be wearing these United and Orange t shirts through Sunday. They made sure to note that the shirts are not taxpayer funded, and they made sure that they wanted us to say, Go Broncos for them. Again, we are at Rockefeller Center, um, right above Rockefeller Plaza. We were on the Today Show just a bit ago. We're going to have that for you coming up on, on 9 News 830. And as you guys mentioned, we're now two days away from kickoff, and you can really tell it's starting to get crowded here, and there's a lot of orange. It's great to see. Oh, good. My friend's flying out today. She's so excited. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. Thanks, right. Corey. Corey. Thank you. It may be cold. It may be snowy, but hey, it is the last winter storm we're going to get this January. <laughs> Because yes. it's the last day or January. By default. Yeah. <laughs> Check the calendar. More 9 News team coverage of this weather coming up right after the break. Be careful out there, everybody. We have seen a lot of slide offs and accidents this morning because mm -hmm. of the snow that fell overnight. Right now, we have Amy Ford, the communications director for the State Department of Transportation, on the phone. Good morning, Amy. Amy? Can you hear us? Doesn't sound like Amy is there. No. We'll try to get her on the phone here in just a second. But as we're doing that, uh, 225 and 270, I think, is the worst of the uh, areas right now. Yeah. Amelia is keeping a very close eye on the traffic. There are a lot. There's lots of red on your maps, Amelia. I don't know if Amelia is standing by just yet. But uh, that 225, 270 area is that one? I'm, am I correct? Yeah, absolutely, That's guys. We are taking a look here at the the metro wide commute and some of the worst areas we have seen have been westbound 270 at Vasquez. Ongoing crashes. We do have uh, new problem spots here. As we take a look really across that whole I-70 corridor, we've seen a lot of red, which means speeds down on the low side. So unfortunately, we are stuck with these backups. This earlier closure, northbound 225 at Mississippi, has now been lifted. So we're very excited about that. We've also seen the closure up to the north end lifted along I-25 between the Wellington area all the way up towards the Wyoming state line. We are back to normal there. And up in the high country, guys, we are looking at a much improved commute across I-70 approaching the tunnel. The speeds are back up, but chains are still required. East westbound at the tunnel, Vale passed, Genesee as well as C-470. U.S. 6 is closed down though, and so is U.S. 40 over Berthoud. So it's going to be a tough weekend getting into the high country. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, Amelia, thank you so much. So let's check in now with Amy Ford, who's yeah. on the phone. How is it going out there for your snowplow crews? Well, they have been working hard, as you know, yeah. helping clear accidents, keeping the roads clear and the like. And even though things are starting to get a little bit better through the commute, we will continue to go all throughout the day as the storm comes in and for that second round this afternoon. Yeah, Amy, how, how do you uh, gear up for a little break and then uh, and another round coming in this afternoon? You're on 12-hour shifts, I'm assuming. That's correct. In fact, there's really no such thing as a break for us. Yeah. What we do is we stay on for 12-hour shifts, and we started that yesterday at 2 p.m. We have 106 plows out in the metro area alone, over 100-plus more throughout the state. And uh, the fact is is that we will keep on now and really stay on through the rest of the storm. And then it sounds like we might be getting hit again early next week, so it's a busy mm -hmm. time for you guys. Yep, tis the season, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, but you know our, our job is uh, to keep the road safe, and we're ready to do it. What do your crews say in comparison to other storms? We can just keep hearing about the monumental amount of snow that's falling up in the high country. What is their take? Yeah, this is really an extraordinary storm up in the high country. And, you know, one of the reasons we have places like Berth and Close is because of those adverse conditions and wanting to make sure that we keep those roads safe. We actually have patrols patrolling those roads right now to make sure they're safe, and then we can open them back up in the morning here. All right. Best of the crews out there. Be safe. And, Amy, Be thank safe. you for the update. We Thanks. appreciate it. It's uh, 746, and we want to head back out to the airport where Taronda's been keeping an eye on the roads and the flights as well. And they've all been holding up pretty good. 
It seems like they have been holding up pretty well. I've been checking those flights back and forth, especially the flights to New York, since some people are going to the Super Bowl if they're lucky enough. And I've seen flights to New York and Newark that are all scheduled for around 8 or 9 o'clock, all saying that they're on time. So that's good news. One of the big things that's going to help people make their flights, the roads. The roads are actually looking pretty good. Pena Boulevard is behind me right here. And we've seen people just going regular speeds on Pena Boulevard. Early this morning, it was already cleared out, just pretty wet. Not very icy or snow pad, so that's definitely good news for people trying to get here. There are more than 200 plows that work in Denver International Airport alone, and we've definitely seen them. I'm seeing one coming from the left side of your screen on Pena Boulevard right now, and it's still got its blades down and it's still laying down that mix behind it to make sure that that snow doesn't accumulate once it does hit the ground. It's only snowing very lightly here, so you won't really see much of an accumulation, especially since our meteorologists say that we may be about done for the morning for the snow. For official word on that, let's talk to meteorologist Becky Ditchfield. Good morning, Becky. No, we don't have Becky. Yeah, we'll check back okay. with Becky just a little bit later okay. on. But we got to show you this first. It uh, yeah. requires a little more creativity, don't right. you think? Check out this awesome way this Eagle County Girl Scout is making sure she doesn't miss out a day <laughs> of selling those cookies with Good all the her. snow. This is what you call a smart cookie. <laughs> Good for her. She is not going to let it stop her. <sighs> So as we've been talking about, it's slippery. It's tough out there, everybody. We're going to check in through different places throughout the state coming up right after the break. Last year it was airplanes, but Mark, why are we here? Well, the Colorado Garden and Home Show is going to use a bunch of these beautiful animals. To make a point? To make a point. You can see all kinds of them in the entry garden. You can visit the other gardens and visit with all the experts who can help you with those home improvement projects. Don't miss Denver's premier remodeling event. Telco presents the Colorado Garden and Home Show, February 15th through the 23rd at the Colorado Convention Center. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited. No, I didn't see that one coming. All right, welcome back, everybody. Take a look. Mostly cloudy skies, but just some flurries out over Fort Collins today. We are looking at a new round of snow building in after 2 p.m., but this is going to target mainly areas along and south of Interstate 70. We'll talk about that forecast here in just a few minutes. Here is a view of some more outside shots across the Front Range, Eastern Plains, and even up for the high country. These posted to our Facebook page. Sue took this photo up in Brighton, where you can see her rocking chair looks a little snow covered. Kelly said these are the stairs. Hard to make those out. Up in Silverthorne to her neighbor's house. And look at all of the snow up at the top of those stairs. Unbelievable. As always, you help us tell the weather story across the state. Use the hashtag 9WX for any social media post. That way we can find exactly those pictures that you're posting and we can share those with everybody else. Out across uh, uh, the state, HD Doppler 9 showing very light snow out for our eastern plains. Some flurries here for the Front Range, but most of the snow right now coming down across the high country. Light snow continues down to the south near Colorado Springs and then out again also on our eastern plains where really now it's pushing into Kansas and Nebraska. Second round will be moving in later on today. We no longer have winter storm warnings in effect here for the Front Range or even for locations along the Continental Divide. They're all basically west of Vail Pass where we're looking at still up to 30 inches of snow accumulating out near Vail Snow Mass and Aspen including Crested Butte. Then down near Telluride and Silverton we'll see about a grand total of 10 to 20 inches of snow. Again the target Target area today along and south of I-70. By 2.30, we'll see some snow move back here into Denver, especially the south side of town. That chance for snow continues well through the drive home tonight, 10.30 tonight while we're all going to bed, and even into early tomorrow morning at 6.30. It's going to take till after that for most of this to move out. We'll see flurries Saturday afternoon and a chilly day ahead. That cold weather is going to stick around for a while. We have another solid three inches to go here in Denver before the system wraps up. Another four for Castle Rock. 4.9 still to fall in Evergreen. Another close to five for Idaho Springs, and we'll see another two inches out near Boulder. This system, of course, on the tail end of it, but not the cold. 16 degrees right now in Denver. It's 18 Greeley. We've got teens and 20s on our eastern plains. Teens and 20s also for the high country. 29 will be the high today. We'll reach 26 in Greeley and 27 in Fort Collins with 20s and 30s out on our eastern plains. Okay, so to recap, mostly cloudy. We've got a break till 2.30 from the snow. Then it picks back up again. We get another three inches here in the city. Tonight, 
Those light snow showers move and change over to flurries. Lows will drop to 14 degrees. We'll have some flurries left over for Saturday with a high of 29. Super Bowl Sunday here looks dry but chilly with a high of 30. Monday, 31. And then we have a whole new storm system that's going to be moving in. Tuesday next week, a new round of snow is in the forecast with highs only of about 20 degrees. So I'd say, Susie, we are a lot colder right now than New York City. <laughs> you know what? You're right, Becky. In fact, we are outside of the Broncos team hotel, and this is the first time that I have not been out here just shivering and waiting for my, uh, the live shot to be done with. It's actually quite pleasant in New Jersey and New York today. I was just outside grabbing a coffee, and the Broncos team buses are lined up outside in front of the Hyatt Hotel, so they're getting ready to go to practice over in the, uh, the Jets facility. That is where they were yesterday. They actually went indoors yesterday. Wednesday, they were outside, but the ground was a little uh, frozen, so the Jets grounds crew has uh, put that practice facility outside underneath a tarp. They have some heaters on it. The Broncos would like to practice outdoors again today. Just they can kind of get used to what it's going to be like at MetLife Stadium on Sunday night. But the temperature, boy, on Sunday, a whole lot different than what we thought it's going to be. They're saying the kickoff will be about 43 degrees, so not too bad, that's for sure. Hey, this morning, the final meeting of the coaches with the press took place. The players were done with their obligations yesterday. Coach John Fox and Coach Pete Carroll posed with the Lombardi Trophy at the Rose Theater in Manhattan. This marked the only official media deal that they have done across the Hudson River, which is right behind us. Everything else has been done right here in New Jersey. There's a lot of motivation to draw from for Sunday night, including a lot of guys wanting to win one for Champ Bailey. I actually do have another guy, uh, Champ Bailey, who's uh, you know been in the league a long time. Uh, you know, has never been to one of these. So I think both those guys uh, and Pete, he's got guys in his locker room. I'm sure you can't do it by yourself as a coach, as a head coach, as an assistant coach. It takes leadership in that locker room. And uh, I think, you know, those guys for our team raise all boats. And uh, people, you know, not just don't want to let the coach down, don't want to let the city or the organization down. They don't want to let their teammates down. And, uh, you know, Pete made reference to the culture you set in your building. And I think, uh, you know, you need players like that leading the charge because uh, you, you really can't do it by yourself. So uh, I know I appreciate uh, uh, Peyton, you know, and Champ and guys like that in that locker room. and. They're a big part of why we're sitting here. A lot of good leadership in the Broncos locker room. We'll hear more from John Fox coming up at 820. That press conference just wrapping up a little bit ago. Broncos heading out to the Jets facility today. The Seahawks, which are just staying a few blocks away at the Weston Hotel, they'll be heading out to the Giants complex as well. Super Bowl 48, just two days and eight hours away. We'll be right back with more 9 News. We're live in Jersey City.